The conversion I'm going to demonstrate today is utilizing Photoshop and Nick Silver FX Pro. If you don't have the latter, don't worry, you can do an in-house uh, conversion with Photoshop or indeed Lightroom at a black and white, and then you can utilize the techniques as you go through. What I have in front of me here has been taken on a converted infrared camera and it has been processed. It's quite a punchy view, so I just need to kind of say that's the approach I'm going to be taking here, but you can dial it up or down as you see fit. This is more Critchell in Dorset. Uh, that is a classic view with the avenue of trees coming straight on. Uh, you can also do a quirky one with the road going off to the left hand side. But also if you turn 90 degrees to the left, you'll find some lovely crops at the right time of year, along with a single avenue of trees going off into the distance. Now, I am quite confident with my infrared converted camera, but when I first started, I chose to shoot in RAW, and this is the result that you get when you go back to your computer. But also in JPEG, this is also what you would see on the back of the camera. It gives you some indication of what it could look like, obviously, without a conversion where you are using your brain, the computer's using its brain. Let me take you through to Bridge, where I am going to choose the only shot I have at my quirky angle, and I'm going to double click to go through here. Now, when I'm in the Camera Raw module, I'm going to hit Optics, and I'm going to uh, apply the Chromatic Aberration Removal and also Profile Corrections, so that should see a bit of a difference. I also want to flatten the image a little bit by lowering the highlights, and the whites and just taking out the, the blacks there. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to have full control of what it is I want to do to this particular shot. So I've got a flattened image there. I've also got a histogram up here where my red channel is quite far to the right. Uh, and that means that I will have access to all those brights in there. And that's really what you're trying to have a look at when you're choosing a right version. If you've got 10 or 12 versions of the same shot. So I'm now going to open that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my Nick Silver effects panel here. If you wanted to, you could also go to the black and white uh, down the bottom here and do it that way. But as I say, I'm going to use the Nick Silver effects and I'm going to punch that through. So when I come through to Silver effects, I'm offered the opportunity to have a look at quite a number of edits. Um, and it's up to you if you want to kind of choose those or go for one that is fairly punchy, uh, but one that you can really work with. Um, so one of the high structure ones I quite like normally, um, smooth or harsh. I'm going to go, I'm going to go harsh for this one here. And all I'm going to do is take the structure down to not a lot there. I'm going to take that right the way back down because I say I would like to be in control of what I'm doing. I'm going to hit OK and it will take me back through to Photoshop. When I'm in there, I'm going to then start making the changes that I want to make. So first up, I'm going to go to um, image and adjustments and levels. Now I'm working on a Mac, so I have command L. You might have control L that you can work with. And what I have in front of me is the opportunity to really start putting some punch back in to my own tastes help if I put preview on so I can actually see what I'm doing. So as you can see there, I can really make it kind of as punchy as I want. So that's what I came through with. I'm going to lower these so I can brighten up those whites a little bit here. But I want to put some of that punch back in the trunks. Now in theory, I could take it up to where the blacks start there. But for me, that's a little bit too much. I'd like to put those in locally. OK, so I'm going to now OK that and put that back through to the main Photoshop. So from this point, it is up to me if I want to do localized dodging and burning, maybe add a vignette, might not be appropriate for this image because it's not something that's central. I want to draw the eye to. It's off at an angle. Okay, so I'm going to start off with doing something sensible. I'm going to do a crop 16 by 9. 
I'm going to make sure that I have the bottom of that tree in. I think it's quite important. Uh, and there's quite a bit of, not dead wood, but stuff I don't really need in the top there. So I'm going to go and make that crop for now. There's also something in the background that you'll have probably noticed that is quite um, annoying and distracting. Just so you're aware, command minus, make something small. That's on a Mac. It could be control otherwise. And control plus uh, will kind of zoom you in or command if you are in a Mac there. Um, so I want to get rid of these two bits and bobs, technical expression, that I am going to do here. Uh, they're just distracting, they're leading my eye. I'm going to do edit, <clears throat> excuse me, fill, content aware fill. This could go hideously wrong. Boof, ah, oh, what a nice little removal that has done. So what I now need to do is to flatten. I'm going to hit layer along the top here and flatten the image. I'm going to also duplicate the layer. So whatever I'm about to do now, those local adjustments, they're not necessarily going to affect um, yeah, I, I can get rid of them quite easily if I've done a bit of a mess up, which I frequently do. So I'm going to have a look now at doing some dodging and burning. Burning darkens, dodging um, kind of makes it uh, sort of brighter. So let me just show you here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm having a look at the shadows only on this particular bit. I'm going to make my brush, I'm going to keep my brush this size at the moment. Um, and no, I'll make it slightly bigger. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having a look at uh, doing, let's just go a bit dramatic, D doing things about 12%. And what you should see, as you can see there, oh no, let's make it bigger. Oh, good gracious. Uh, there we go. What I'm looking at here is I'm making my road darker, so that should have more of an impact. It's a little bit too punchy for my liking, I'm not going to lie. There's also some markings on there that I really want to get rid of. Uh, because I think that's going to just distract as well. So I've made already my road a little bit more punchy and I'm only affecting the shadows uh, because that's what I've asked it to do. I'm then going to take it down a little bit. I'm going to take it to about 8% here. This could be dreadful. And I'm going to do the similar to the shadows that are in my tree here. I'm going to make this an awful lot smaller so I don't go over into the sky, which I'm probably doing at the moment. As you can probably see, I'm making that really quite punchy. And I might do similar up in the trees here, but I might work my way down all of these trees and do a similar effect. I'm probably going to do a contrasting version of that with um, and dodging to make some of those brighter. I don't want to do the whole of that tree. I just want to do the inside of that tree because I've got a light falling on the right hand side. I don't want to make that sort of too confusing. But effectively, gosh, doing it very quickly here, that's what I'm looking for is to get some of that contrast back in where appropriate. So let's now go to the dodge area. So this should, in theory, affect my highlights. Let's go a little bit over the top like I did with that road, which was a bit bonkers. And we go to 21%. That is ridiculous. Do not do that. Edit. Undo the dodge tool. Welcome. What on earth do you think you're playing at? Demonstration purposes. Ridiculous. What you do is to select some of these areas here. Uh, and it may not look like I'm making that much of a difference right now. But actually, when I switch off and on, you will see some of this coming through. This is off and on. Off and on. Now, it looks like I haven't been particularly careful here. So I just need to make sure that obviously the more I go over it, the more it builds up the effect. Let's have a look here. Off and on. Just need to make sure I haven't got any weird stripes uh, going on here. And I just need to be aware in particular of some of these areas here. Oopsie. Where we've got um, some highlights coming through. So if I'm switching it off, obviously the road is quite, well, the whole thing is quite bland. I've gone bonkers on the road. I'm aware that it's far too much, but you can see the difference that you have here. You can also obviously choose to select a particular area. I'm going to flatten that, which locks in those changes. I'm going to do that by hitting layer and flatten the image. You can also go into filter and camera raw filter, which will take you right back out. Um, to the original screen we came in with all the stuff that you've done already. 
um, and you can do some adjustments within this. In some cases, something like an effect and a vignetting can be really quite powerful. I don't think it works in this case, uh, but if you had something like the tree I showed you earlier, which was a central composition, that vignetting can work really well. It can be really strong. So realistically, what you're looking at is to initially take out as much of the, the contrast uh, with the blacks and the whites and the highlights and the shadows as possible. You're then looking to put them in locally so that you have control over it. And if I were doing this properly, I'd probably do a little bit of work on the background here in these in the tree section. Um, I would obviously um, have a look and just try and work a little bit more on the shadows and highlights uh, on the tree trunks. And I might even select an area in the background here and I might just choose to do something like a bit of brightness there, a mask and feather it to about 170, 160 maybe, and just see if that draws the eye more into the picture.